Okay guys, so here now we have the finished product here. This is the ship from the Oblivion movie. Uh, again, this movie stars Tom Cruise and came out in 2013. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, what intrigued me the most about this film was really the overall look of it. Um, a lot of imagery that you typically would see in concept art. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, if you're not familiar with concept art, although if you're a sci-fi fan, I can't imagine that you're not, um, it's essentially art or a form of illustration that's used to help devise ideas and uh, concepts uh, for a movie or for animation. It's used in video games, etc. So um, the whole movie is filled with, with stuff like that. And uh, the, this ship in particular uh, is something that really interested me. I was pretty fascinated just watching it fly around uh, on screen there. And uh, so this model, again, was produced by Fantastic Plastic. It measures about 7 inches from front to back. So the model is mainly made up of resin. And um, the only pieces that aren't resin here, again, are the legs. I think I pointed out earlier, uh, if you're going to do this standing configuration, you have to use the metal legs that are provided with the kit. Otherwise, you use these plastic ones or resin ones that um, you use to uh, uh, build it in the flying configuration. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is this front windshield. And you'll notice if you look closely enough here, it is a little bit hazy. And there is a reason for that. Now, I put the pieces together and uh, set it aside. When I looked back at it, I started noticing that the uh, clear plastic parts started to get cloudier and cloudier. And I was scratching my head, crying, trying to figure this out, and um, I just really couldn't understand because I figured this was a resin kit and you used cyanoacrylate or super glue for everything, right? Well, that's not the case. In fact, I contacted Fantastic Plastic and they uh, told me that had I read the instructions thoroughly, I would have realized that I wasn't supposed to use super glue. I was supposed to use Elmer's glue for this very reason. So, this is definitely an oversight on my part, and it's an example of how you should read the instructions before you jump into anything, not do what I did. This is purely my mistake here, so it's something that I'm kind of stuck with now. So again, if you build this kit, no super glue, use Elmer's glue. Model comes with decals. You can see this is the main decal here, a few other decals along the turrets, and of course the uh, number 49 designation there on the side. Uh, for the most part, the decals were fairly easy to work with. So decal for uh, the uh, top of the ship, as you can see, is there. And they also provide decals for the um, exhausts here of the engines. Uh, so uh, there's one decal for each side. There is a decal provided for this stripe that you see here. Um, I did not use that decal. Uh, I actually didn't look closely at the decal sheet. Um, until I was almost done with the model and so I ended up using some pinstriping that I had available and that worked pretty well. It was strongly recommended to use liquid decal film from Microscale. Uh, this is something that uh, because the decals are very delicate makes them much easier to handle. So you simply just apply uh, a fine coat of that, uh, you just brush it on, you let it dry. It takes about 15 minutes to dry and then when you put the decal in water you take it out, it's much easier to handle. Um, based on what the instructions say, they're pretty delicate, so they probably would fall apart if you didn't use that. So um, it's the first time I've ever used that, and I think it's a pretty helpful thing to have, um, especially if you have any issues with decals that are very delicate. Oh, and one other feature to point out here, you notice these little uh, wires sticking out of the model here, and they're supposed to represent antennae. Uh, there are markings on the surface of the model that uh, show you where to attach them. Uh, you do have to use a pin vise to open them up a bit, though. But once you do, you just insert them into place and uh, use a little super glue to hold them in there. Let me take a second just to tell you about the stand I made here. Uh, this was made from something I found at the dollar store. This is just a uh, little box you're supposed to put stuff in. And it kind of looked a little spacey here with these designs off to the side, so I figured I could use it as a landing pad. So I painted it uh, silver here, and then I added this design here at the top. And this is actually my first attempt at creating my own decal. So with Tester's decal paper, I printed this uh, using my inkjet. And it's supposed to represent the turntable that is um, where the ship uh, sits on, and uh, it's supposed to turn the ship around on the landing pad here. Uh, so two problems. One, it turned out too small, so I misjudged that. And secondly, you can see these uh, lighter shaded areas here. Uh, and so it didn't really turn out all that great. Uh, the reason for this is you're supposed to use, at least testers recommend, some sort of bonding agent uh, that you spray on it. Uh, but I didn't have that available, so I ended up just using the uh, liquid decal film here. And um, it worked out okay to strengthen the decal. Unfortunately, it just didn't, uh, I didn't apply it evenly, and so it... Uh, 
just didn't dry evenly and that's what's causing these uh, sort of mottled areas that you see there. So live and learn. I'll just uh, try something different the next time. But uh, for the for the most part, though, it, I think it serves its function here. It's just going to be something that the model is going to sit on inside a cabinet. Uh, one other thing to point out here before we wrap it up is that I use Tamiya's flat white along with a uh, uh, Tamiya's pearl clear coat, and then I applied a semi gloss coat on top of that. And then the uh, darker parts that you see here were all highlighted with just pastels. All right, so let's go ahead and rate this kit now. Um, for accuracy, I would give it four out of five stars. It is a fairly accurate kit. For likability, I actually like this kit a lot, so I'm gonna give that four out of five as well. In terms of ease of assembly, uh, I would give it out of four. Uh, you know, it wasn't very hard to put together, and this model, it tells you, is for intermediate builders, so uh, you'd expect a few challenges here and there. Uh, as I mentioned, the cockpit was a bit of a challenge to put together, as well as the landing gear, but um, you know, it's just something you just have to be prepared for. And in terms of affordability, I would give it four out of five dollar signs. And that's not to say that this is necessarily a negative thing, because if you are willing to build these kind of customized kits, you're going to find that they do cost a bit more, uh, because they're not widely available, and they're produced usually by a smaller uh, manufacturer. And uh, so it's something that you just need to expect, and it really comes down to what you're willing to spend on a model kit. All right, so just some final thoughts here. I think overall the model kit is a very good one to get a hold of if you are um, interested in this uh, piece here for your collection. Um, I think compared to other garage kits or other um, uh, customized kits that I've built in the past, this uh, uh, sports a lot of good detail here. Um, it uh, did not have a lot of surface imperfections that I had to fill in. Uh, and uh, so for the most part, everything went pretty smoothly. All right, so there you have it. Again, this is the ship from the Oblivion movie. Um, this was a pretty interesting and fun build. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions about it, of course, you can always contact me. So I'm not sure what my next project is going to be, but no doubt I'll make a video about it, so just uh, keep an eye out for that. And until then, take care. Thanks for watching.